Time to head out to the world headquarters. I'm here in Marshfield, the mean streets of Marshfield. Anyway, the weatherman said we were going to get snow overnight. Let's check out and see just how right he was. Stay tuned. All right, let's just see how accurate he was. I think the forecast called for like eight to 12 inches. So what I'm reading there is about seven, maybe seven and a half, close to seven and a half. Wet snow, so it's kind of heavy. It's gonna pile up when you plow it. Anyway, speaking of plowing, there's the old Silverado and here's the snow plow I got for it. A nine and a half foot snow dog plow and uh it's a big plow but anyway this is really going to be the very first time i used it hooked it up last night kept the truck inside overnight there's an 88 uh, ltr 250r so we're going to get this thing rolling and then the driveways to the three maple woods no actually the driveway to the four maple woods we added a fourth this year they're all going to have to be plowed out so i needed some youtube content maybe you can ride along with me and we'll talk about stuff all right, we're gonna be heading down the street here, leaving the mean streets of Marshfield. And when I say mean streets, I mean it. I mean it when I say mean streets. It's been tough. Yeah, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. We had a lot of ice before this, and that made the snow really stick to the trees. Now, these people on the mean streets, they are gonna be at this all day that's one thing i've learned about the people is they like to clear their snow look at that guy he's hard at it here we go we got a shoveler we got a shoveler but these people they ain't joking around when they're talking about clearing snow they get right to it see i grew up out in the country back out closer to the world headquarters and you know a little bit of snow didn't bother us we just let that uh go and drive on it or whatever but i ended up over here many many years ago due to a prior marriage and now i commute back and forth because my kids stayed in the school district and you know i didn't want to pull them out of there and they liked you know their friends and this that and the other things so Alright guys, here we are. Yeah, so I actually used to, many years up until prior to last winter, I, I quit. But I did snow plowing as kind of a, a side gig for a long, long time. And uh, I'll be honest with you, last winter I didn't do it, you know, for money. And I do not miss it at all. Like today, you know, I knew this was coming and I don't know, all I gotta do is worry about my stuff. When I was doing that, I wouldn't have slept the night before or slept at all, you know, you have to get up early and be out early, but you try to get a couple out, few hours of sleep at least before you have to go out. I wouldn't have slept. I was always like, you just couldn't sleep. That's how I am. If I know I gotta get up and do something, I can't relax. So, I don't miss that in the least, that snow plowing. Also, what plays a factor into this is the, the temperatures. It's pretty warm out right now. I'm looking at the uh, temp on the outside at the world headquarters, and it's upper 30s. And you just don't get traction like that. When the temps are cold, you get so much better traction. And it's warm. I mean, relatively speaking. Like I said, 
before when I said I don't like snow and you think, oh, Wisconsin guy doesn't like snow. Honestly, I don't really like snow. I don't really care for it. Well, we got the place cleaned up. After that, I gotta go out and hit the driveways to the four different uh, maple woods or sugar bush. I feel like sugar bush is more of an Eastern term or Northeast maple industry word. I've never really used it. I started calling it that just when I kind of became more and more involved in the maple world. Well, I really more would just say the woods. It's kind of like what we say here in Wisconsin. But uh, sugar bush, who says sugar bush? Who doesn't? What part of the country are you guys in? And we're gonna go to what we call woods number one. I guess what this video is, is I'm just gonna kind of show you around of where everything is and where we tap our trees. So right in here is where the original woods is. Now, I gotta be really careful going into this driveway because the it's very, very narrow. And we will see what we can do. This is the one where I learned maple syrup making it. Learned it here from my grandpa uh, and then my dad. So this is the one where I have the memories of being out in the woods, cooking sap, and this has the wreckage of a few different old cookers out there. And that's what in Wisconsin, we call them cookers or cooking syrup. Out east, it's more of like sugar making or whatever. And then that's just the terminology you don't really hear here. Although I am one to kind of say, uh, making syrup, I'm not like cooking syrup so much. Does anybody out there say baking syrup? Nice hardwoods, a hard maple, sugar maple woods. Um, pretty dense, very mature. And that is just where I have tons of memories. Tons of memories, that's where I learned how to do this. And like I said, sometime maybe we can go back in there and show you some of the remains of some of the the pans and the arches and stuff because I literally, I learned on really nothing. I mean, it was just buckets and a very primitive setup where we were boiling out in the open. There was no shelter ever it, from my dad or my grandpa. They were just, you know, very primitive. Did it for a little extra syrup to use for themselves. Tapped a couple hundred trees. Then, as you can see here outside of the truck, this red little building, this is what I built. This is my first like big improvement when I kind of had the maple syrup running through my veins and wanted to do something more with it. So that little shed right here, I think it's like 12 by 20 or something like that. I had that built and then I put my first what you want to call real evaporator in there this one was actually a divided pan evaporator that was on a, a real arch that it actually was insulated but a lot of times you'll hear of guys who will you know they'll tell me I, I just got into maple syrup three years ago, two years ago, whatever, and they have the full complement of equipment. I mean, they, they've got the RO, they've got the 4x16 evaporator, you know, or whatever it might be. And that's just not my experience at all. I grew up around this, have a big history of it you know, on the farm and stuff. And it was a very long, long, piece by piece by piece process of 
of building up what I currently have, which is a full-time business in maple syrup. A lot of guys are doing it for hobby. I am doing this full-time. So yeah, there was a lot of memories in that building right there because that's literally kind of what got me on my way to making this into a full-time thing. I mean, it was many years down the road after that was built, many years before I got to the next building. But that was the, that was the, the second stage of it, you might say. But yeah, this woods has, of course, vacuum in it. And that is where I learned, that's where I learned how to do maple tubing in this woods. And believe me, I didn't know anything about it. I kind of learned by trial and error and just by like what I read or what little bit of information I saw online at that time. Because I was actually one of the first people in this area to put tubing up, like in my immediate area here. This one's got a little bit wider entrance. This is the one where and it's way off the road, way, way off the road, about a quarter of a mile. It's way back there across this open pasture. And that's what we did is we hauled it all the way back and we hauled it with the Amish, uh, the Amish stone boat. If any of you guys know what a stone boat is, it's basically like a sled that they just pull it over land um, or through mud or whatever it might be. Now over to my right you're gonna see a little shack that actually houses the vacuum pump and tank for woods number one because we're on the other side of it. And it comes across some really nasty, nasty landscape and terrain. Basically, you almost go through a swamp to get it back out here to the entrance by the road, where then, after Albert, he hauled it with his horses, um, we would uh, transfer it into tanks and bring it back up to the world headquarters. This is down here is the old dairy farm that, that I grew up on that my dad had for many years. But we got a tree down in the way, so I can't plow this all right now and I don't have time to mess with it. This is the one where all the Amish in the area go down to use the phone in the barn. The local Amish economy here in Southern Clark County, Town of Lynn, hinges on the old phone in that barn. But a story about that phone in that barn with the Amish is this. They, for many, many years, used a rotary dial phone in that barn, and that was fine. But up until a couple years ago, finally, even a little bit of technology caught up with the Amish. I mean, we've been using, you know, cell phones and smartphones for decades now, but, well, maybe not decades, but over a decade, they came to my dad and they asked him to put in a touch-tone phone in the barn there that they could use so they could more easily, you know, make selections, you know, press one for English, press two for Amish, things like that when they were calling places or ordering things. And uh, he had to put in a touch-tone phone in the barn there for those guys. Little tidbit, a little secret Amish fact revealed.
Back here at woods number three, and I've already kind of somewhat busted a trail all the way in here, but this one is really sketchy. Traction is not good. Um, yeah, I'm not liking this. I don't want to get caught back here 600 and 700 feet off the road. I am moving. However, we need some really cold weather to help harden this up. Put that plow in the forward V so I don't drag any snow with me trying to back out of here. Woo! Woo! I got out. That one, not fun. Not fun at all. Um, oh, a corn. I don't know what that's all about, why that was left there. Um, it's the perfect snow fence, right for where we gotta go. Glad to make it out of there alive. That was, that was pretty iffy there for a minute. Okay, so now we're heading on to woods number four. Uh, going past, you know, this is not a functioning dairy farm there anymore. That was a representation of like, kind of like what I grew up on. One of the tens of thousands of small little dairy farms that were in this area you know years ago but those have long since gone out of business and uh, you know there's just a, a fraction a fraction of those types of farms left at this point anymore when I was going to high school they, those things were everywhere everywhere like where the world headquarters is to where I went to high school in Granton, back at that time when I was like in high school, there was probably eight to 10 dairy farms just on that four and a half mile stretch. Now, I don't know if there's one, but you know, that's just the way the industry went. Bigger and bigger, price goes lower, make more of it. Hmm. Does it remind you of anything else, maple syrup makers? Now this one, guys, isn't too bad. This is woods number four. This is the new one, if you saw any of the short videos or whatever. This is the one I've been working in. And uh, the ground here is a much more solid than over at that other location. I felt we'll be able to get in here. The problem is, is like I go down these paths in the field and you're kind of on these ridges or edges of other fields and it like, again, it kind of acts like a snow fence. This is a 20 acre woods. This one is one that I'm leasing per tap. And this is one where the landowner came to me it's not far, it's like a mile, little over a mile, mile and a half north of the world headquarters. And he said, I was wondering if you wanted to tap my woods next year. And I said, okay, sure. So that was way back, we were still in the season. And I didn't really come and take a look in, at it until like September. Um, Cause you know, maple syrup and busy kind of with the cleanup and all that stuff through, uh, definitely through April into May. And then June, July, and August, that's my time to not have to deal with maple stuff so much. And then boom, September was when I got into here looking at it. And he said, oh, I think there's three to 400 taps, right? So I was like, well, it's not that much. Let's go see if it's worth it in 20 acres. I thought it sounded kinda, you know, you'd think there'd be more. Well, and I went and walked through it, kind of walked through it quick, and I estimated seven to 800 taps. Now that I've gotten into it, I think there could be 15 to 1600 taps. So I'm still putting up lateral lines in here. I mean, it is still December 17th. 
we got a long time to go, but there's still a lot of work to do in there. All for the love of maple syrup, guys. Believe me. It's crazy. There's gotta be easier ways. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this one goes. I'm a little, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit nervous about it, just getting that sap out and how far it is off the road and how, you know, we have to get back there to pump it out and things like that. Go through about an eighth of a mile of woods and then a quarter of a mile across an open field. And we'll see how that goes. Um, just because none of these pipes are gonna be very, uh, have very much gravity flow to them. They're kind of pretty level where they have to get across. So, adventures in maple syrup making. You know what's kind of interesting is I told you earlier about how I used to plow snow, you know, for some extra cash, mostly, you know, small businesses, parking lots and stuff like that. But I started thinking about how maple syrup and the snow plowing world have a lot in common. Back when I was plowing that snow, and you know, you try to get jobs or whatever, you bid on them, you give people prices, I found out that there was no shortage of guys with a truck who would slap a plow on it and they would undercut you for five bucks to get the job. Now, what does that sound a lot like to me? It sounds a lot like the maple syrup world today. Um, there's no shortage of people or people out there making syrup that will, you know, just go to the next dollar down just to be lower than you. And that's just kind of a testament to the hobby aspect of it, I guess, maybe having a pretty big influence. But I think a lot of people wouldn't say they're doing it as a hobby, but they just don't know how to market it. What it is, is like the snow plowing, there's a ton of people out there trying to make a buck doing it. Kind of the same thing with maple syrup. I mean, there's still a lot of the $10 a quart guys here in my area, and it's just to sell it. It's just to move it. You know, you're not factoring in cost of production. You're not factoring in your time. And you know, and to be totally honest with you, it doesn't take that much to make maple syrup. It doesn't take that much to plow snow. You just need a beat up old truck and some old used straight blade plow that you found, put it on there, you can go out and be a snow plow contractor. Now, how good you are, how reliable you are, that's another question. Same with maple syrup. It doesn't take that much to make maple syrup. You actually don't need that much to make it. Get a flat pan, you can make a few gallons. Um, to make good maple syrup, that's another story. That's another question. I think what we got going on in the maple syrup world right now is a lot of bad maple syrup being made that hurts the industry as a whole because people will taste that maple syrup and they'll be like, I don't like it. You don't know how many times I've heard that actually from people who have said, I tried the real stuff, but I don't like it. And I'll be honest with you, I've tried a lot of different maple syrups out there and some of it is not good because it's just not made good. It, it's way overdone. It's underdone. Um, it tastes burnt. It has a bad, a strong flavor to it. Like that's not palatable. It's a wild world. It's the wild west out there in the maple syrup world. Well, now that I'm down here by the woods and I got about an hour and a half of daylight left, I brought my sled with me because that's what I'm gonna pull through the woods right now. It's got to that point. I brought some 516s and what I'm gonna do is do a few more of those lateral lines while I'm out here. Why not? I don't wanna waste a trip. That's all I got guys. Thanks for taking a ride along with me. I'm gonna get out there and do a little work. Please like and subscribe and remember, as I always do, remember to always keep it real.